Hi, and welcome to part two of the Power IK control rig tutorial series. Um, in this one, we're going to go through and actually set up the spider with some Power IK controls um, from scratch. So here you can kind of see the finished full rig where we have a, uh, a series of foot effectors that are moving the thorax, and then we also have a thorax control which you can uh, additively move around. So let's get started uh, with how you would start uh, setting up a control rig with Power IK from scratch. Okay, so I'm going to pop back out to the uh, content browser. I'm going to right click and go animation, new control rig, select the parent rig as control rig, hit create. I'm going to call this the spider demo control rig. Okay, we're going to pop that open. Uh, this control rig is not yet associated with any particular rig. So I'm going to click, the first thing you do is click this green, import hierarchy. From here I'm going to find the skeletal mesh uh, that I want to create a control rig for. Uh, in this case it's our spider. I'm going to hit OK. That's going to import his entire skeleton. And uh, if I zoom out here, we can see our spider. Um, we have the begin execute pin, which we can use to start doing some interesting things. So first of all, for every rig you build, you're probably going to want a root control. So I'm going to go new, right click in the rig hierarchy, go new control. I'm going to name this the root underscore control. And I'm going to uh, bring this in and get control. And that's going to uh, create a node called a get control transform. You could probably just do it uh, uh, through here. But uh, what we're going to do is get the transform of this root control, and we're going to use that to set the transform of the root bone. So I'm going to grab the root bone, drag this in here, and instead of getting the bone transform, I'm going to set the bone transform. It's automatically created an execute pin and connected it up uh, to the begin execution. Um, so right now it's saying uh, it's in local space um, with a value of uh, 0, 0, 0, which is why it hasn't moved it at all. So I'm going to now connect the transform of the control in there, hit compile, and change it from local space to global space. Um, and now if we grab our root control and move it around, uh, it should um, be, uh, well, so it will be affecting the root, um, but we don't actually have the uh, propagate, propagate to children, so it's just moving that root bone um, all on its own without actually updating uh, all the children. And because there's nothing skinned to the root bone, the skinning starts at the thorax bone, which is this child, uh, you, we won't actually see any effect. Okay, so very important to remember this propagate to children. It'll get you every time. So we'll click that, and we see our spider move, but unfortunately now it's it's flipped. Um, so uh, the root, con the root uh, control is obviously uh, coming in at a different orientation. It looks like a orientation of 90 degrees um, on X. Okay, so I'm going to set the initial transform uh, to 90 on X and then uh, 0 the current transform. So I'm going to um, 0 that and 0 this and now we're back to 0. Okay, so I just got a baked in initial transform on the control of 90 degrees in X um, and this uh, control is now drawing as this little uh, red circle. Um, I'm going to change that to something much bigger and more interesting. Uh, I think the octagon works really well for root controls. Um, and I'm going to make that a little bigger so that it covers the entire spider. So I'm going to set the scale of the gizmo transform uh, to a value of about 4. That covers the whole spider, but you'll notice that you know it'd be nice if it was lying on the ground. So you actually have a separate transform just for the gizmo um, you can rotate that. I'm going to try a value of 90 in here. Uh, and now we have a root control which is lying on the ground. Um, that transform is getting piped into the root bone and then propagated to all the children. So we have here sort of the beginnings of a very basic uh, control. And as you can see, our spider is now stuck to it. Okay. So nothing we've done so far is any different than uh, regular control rig. Uh, rigging. Um, let's get started now using some Power IK. So after we've set the transform of our root control, I want to have a uh, transform on each of these feet controls. Um, 
and use that to uh, to be able to animate the feet and have the whole body follow along. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is create right click and create a Power IK solver. Okay, um, you'll notice it defaults to a character root name of pelvis. So if I hit compile uh, in the Outlook output log, you would see a uh, a warning from Power IK saying that the character root bone is invalid. Um, was unable to find a bone named pelvis. Uh, so we're going to actually set that to the thorax. Hit recompile again and uh, we should be good now. If we clear that log we shouldn't be getting any more warnings. And then I'm going to create eight effectors. So I'm just going to click the plus sign eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's one for each of his feet. And I'm going to go through now and start setting the bone names uh, to the names of the, the leg, uh, the feet bones. So if we open up the first one here, we can see that each leg has six bones, um, with the last one being named 06. So I'm going to set that to uh, leg A 06R. So we'll go A, B, C uh, down the right hand side and then A, B, C down the left hand side. I'm going to pause the video here and fill in all the bone names on these effectors. Okay, I've got all the bone names set. Uh, now we need some positions for these effectors and that's going to be coming from some controls. So we have some more controls we need to add. Um, so I'm going to go over here and create a new control. I'm going to call it leg A R control. And we can duplicate that and call it leg B R control. So I'm going to go through and make A, B, C, D for both sides. Okay, I've got leg A, B, C, D for the right hand side and leg A, B, C, D for the left hand side. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to turn them into boxes. Okay, um, they're looking a little bit big, so I'm going to scale those down to a value of 0.2. Okay, uh, it looks like it only applied the, uh, the gizmo to the first selected thing. That's okay. I'm going to go through and do that. I'm going to pause the video. I'll finish, I'll, uh, I'll finish up that. Okay, so uh, I've gone through and uh, scaled and turned all of these controllers into boxes for both the left and the right hand side. Uh, now we need to set their initial positions. Okay, um, because I only need the positions of these controls, I'm going to select the bone, um, copy the global transform location and then paste that into the initial look, initial transform location. And then you can see the control snap to that bone. So I'm just going to go through uh, for each one, uh, copy the global transform, paste into the initial transform location of the controller, and we'll go through around all the, uh, the foot controllers and snap them to their bone that way. Okay, so now all of our foot controls have their initial location set to the location of the equivalent foot bone. Um, now I'm going to add a convenient color, so I'm going to make the ones on the left hand side uh, blue. So I have a palette here that I've pre-created with uh, blue so that we keep it the same color. That's a general convention, is blue on the left, red on the right. And then we also generally make things in the middle uh, yellow. Sometimes you see, you'll see green or yellow used in the middle. Okay, so now we have our basic control rig. Um, you'll notice though that when I rotate and move the root control, that those feet controller controls are not coming along with it. So let's hit compile to reset. I'm going to grab all those foot controls and just parent them, just drag them underneath the root control. I'm going to hit compile again. And there we go, now our feet controls are moving along. But they're still not, of course, actually affecting um, our spider in any way. So we need to plug those now into that Power IK solver. Okay, so here's our Power IK solver with the uh, eight effectors. I've got the bone name set to the tip bones. Uh, and we need to start piping in the positions of our controls. So I'm going to start with the first one, AR, I'm going to get control. Um, this is something a little bit strange, so the Power IK solver effectors don't take a transform as input, but they take a uh, 
a separate location and a rotation, and the rotation is actually formatted as a uh, rotator with pitch, yaw, and roll, um, whereas the controls output a quaternion. So we need to, to uh, convert that from a quaternion. Um, I think it's... to rotator, okay, has that light blue on it. Um, and the position we can pipe in directly, um, but we do need to set the position space from relative to input pose to component space. So you can see his foot flew off there. That's because uh, uh, component space is in Power IK parlance is the same as global space and control rig. So it's the space that's relative to the whole rig. Okay, so I'm gonna go, go ahead and grab uh, the next control, grab that translation, pipe it in there, set it to component space, and just go around all his legs, uh, piping the transform uh, positions into the Power IK solver. Okay, so here we are with our finished uh, Power IK solver setup. So we've got all eight of those controls being pumped into uh, their equivalent effector. We have the effector bone name set to the same bone, uh, and we have the position space set to component space, so that's very important. Um, you'll notice though that I didn't bother going ahead and connecting the rotation on these, um, simply because in this case, uh, we don't really need to be rotating the tips of the spider's uh, feet. Uh, but I did want to show you that if you do want to use the rotation of your effector, you, have, you do have to convert it from a quaternion uh, to a uh, rotator. Okay, so I'm going to hit compile on that. Um, our rig now is very simple. We simply set the root, uh, we move the whole character, including all the controls with the root control because the controls are parented to it. And we, then we update the skeleton to that pose. Then we run it all through a Power IK solver. Um, remember, you do have to set the character root, um, and at this point, we should be able to just move these effectors and have the, uh, the Power IK solver running. So now you can grab the foot effectors, and you have full body IK running in control rig uh, through Power IK. Okay, so there's a lot of places you could go from here. Um, if we look at our demo rig from here, we actually pipe it through uh, a second Power IK solver where again we, we add uh, not just the feet as effectors but also the thorax control. Um, the thorax control is then updated based on the position of the thorax bone from the first Power IK solver. Um, we also use that handy Verlay node to add a little bit of uh, dynamic secondary motion on this guy. Um, which I think really helps kind of like give it an organic feel that's going to be really important for a lot of procedural animation effects. Um, and then of course we have some very simple uh, FK controls for the fangs, the head, and the abdomen. Um, but yeah, those, these are the general principles necessary to create uh, control rig setups with Power IK. Um, very similar to the, the Power IK solver node that you're, you may be familiar with in the Atom graph. Um, it's, yeah, it's actually the exact same uh, data structure, uh, but here you can specify uh, the effectors and, and drive them directly with controls through control rig. Um, you, all, you, all, you do, of course, have access to the bend directions, excluding bones. Um, joint limits will be coming online in a subsequent update, and the center of gravity constraint. Uh, you, can, you can turn the, the entire effect on and off and blend it on and off with the solver alpha value. Um, and you can change the amount that the uh, thorax is going to rotate with this root rotation multiplier. All right, so that concludes our look at uh, what it's like to rig with Power IK in Unreal's new control rig. Um, I can't wait to see what everybody comes up with using this thing. I think the results are pretty awesome. Um, in future videos, I will be going over how you might use this in an atom graph by uh, taking this whole control rig setup and putting that right in an atom graph node. Um, including doing cool things like maybe adding some dynamic bobbing on top of uh, the Power IK ground node, um, as well as doing some procedural reaching effects and, and other uh, kind of neat procedural animation effects. So thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.